And Michael Parsons is one of the top three pass rushers in the entire NFL. Yep. So you would think, obviously, he would make him that number one defense player of the year. You said he's going to have to. You're saying Bill or in the future, no matter where he goes, you're it, talking about Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, we're talking about Michael. I'm, I'm saying you got to. The quarterback position, I mean, Dak, I think the Cowboys took a little too long the first time they paid him. Then I think he got 40, and, mm-hmm. and then obviously that deal looks great at this point. But I don't, I don't think he necessarily reset. I don't think he jumps Burrow or Herbert or those guys. But he's going to be in that ballpark. You can't – I mean, speak if you're Bill, you want to come in and have to draft the quarterback coming off of 11, 12 win season. Let's anticipate that in the you know, later half of the first round. Like, I don't think you want to do that as a 73-year-old head coach. So you want to have your quarterback in place. I think they're going to have to take care of Dak. C.D. Lamb maybe is the is the question mark, maybe. But he he's such you a focal it. point of that offense. And he then was, Micah, obviously, we know he's got to C.D. was care. first in catches last Last year mm-hmm. he was second so in good. yards third in touchdowns like cd's gonna get so it. good but the conversation uh tat looks sweet uh sweet Thanks, tat looks very sweet that's my first time seeing it got eyes on it things glistening right <laughs> yeah. Now. Yeah. very Finally sweet there you go but you're talking about cd kind of gets glossed <laughs> over because the conversation is always about the drama of the dallas cowboys yeah you know like his dak prescott a guy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mike mccarthy is he on his way out jerry jones huh <laughs> what's he doing that's the whole conversation it's like this dude is the one making the plays for the Dallas Cowboys whenever. And uh, he's obviously holding out during a mandatory minicamp. It's a big statement from CD and his team saying, we ain't doing shit (laughs) until we get a deal together here because if he goes to mandatory minicamp and gets hurt, what do we get? You're going to hold that over his head? Mm -hmm. Now, granted, there are some people that have done, like, hold-ins – you know, where you show up to the building, but you're not going to really participate in any of the on-field stuff. We'll be in the meeting. We understand it's a mandatory minicamp. I'll come in, say what's up, do my thing. But that is not how C.D. Lamb is choosing to handle this. Micah Parsons is in the building, and uh, Mike McCarthy said he's engaged. So I don't know what that necessarily means. But C.D. not being at this, I think, is a big statement from C.D. Especially the way the Cowboys' offense has evolved like the last three years. You know, I mean, when Dak was younger, it was everyone talked about the O-line and how good they yep. were, and it was the two headed monster with Zeke and Pollard and then Zeke leaves and it's Pollard by himself and he's he's not really like the bell cow number one guy and now they're throwing it 45 50 times a game with Dak so it's like CD knows like hey I'm I'm the vocal point of this offense it's not hey we're gonna pound it down your throat anymore and Dak's gonna make the throws when he needs to it's like I'm I'm relied on to catch at least 10 plus balls every single game so yeah I mean why wouldn't you yeah I, the thought of Mike McCarthy's last year with a quarterback that's mad a wide receiver that's mad. Mm-hmm. Your number one guy on defense, not not with a deal or happy or whatever. Uh-oh. It's like Mike McCarthy's just going to be. Oh, I read headlines too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see what everybody's saying. Mm-hmm. I, I'm out of here. We don't, we the Super Bowl or I'm gone. I, I pretty much understand it. And that's how it's been for like the last three years yeah. for Mike McCarthy. And then you start thinking about like Bill Belichick is the head coach for the Dallas Cowboys. That would be bananas. Jerry Jones and Bill Belichick doing their song and dance together. I would be excited to see how that goes. They've been around the NFL together a very long time. Everybody automatically assumes that Jerry and Bill have respect for each other, and that's yep. been said publicly so much that it hasn't been disputed. Nope. So I just assume that is real as well. And could you fathom an organization that is more and we got a chance to experience a little bit whenever we're down there for WrestleMania. It is a buttoned up franchise. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you talk about like the business, the way it is run now, all the tours through the building and shit, that's going to stop. Interesting. I'll be excited to see how Bill Belichick handles that with Jerry Jones if that was the case. But think about the convo. And I'm assuming we're not the only ones having this. Mike McCarthy is basically sitting there as a lame duck right now. Mm -hmm. Unless he wins the Super Bowl. That is his campaign Uh to remain the Dallas Cowboys head coach, win the Super Bowl. That's fun. Because you know who's in this league right now? Who's that? (laughs) Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. Mm. Kansas City Chiefs are still playing, still, here. Yep. still playing football right mm-hmm. now. You know, and it's like that is what Mike McCarthy's staring down. I wonder if he's content with it too. Already has a championship. Yeah. He's already made a bunch of money. He's been able to re uh, invent himself pretty much down there in Dallas. Has had success in Dallas. Had a lot of success in Green Bay. Pittsburgh guy, football guy. Has stayed true to himself. I wonder if he's just content with like, yeah, whatever happens, happens here. I guess that's the only mindset he, create, he can have in and, this particular case. And probably will get another opportunity. I mean, he's not super old. He's not as old as Bill is, you know, and you look at his like career record. I mean, they used to always talk, people Great. used to always give Mike shit, but then they'd put his you know, his wins and losses right up next to Sean Payton. And it's like, oh, wow, like, these are actually, like, pretty much the same guy. They've each won a Super Bowl that, you know, they, they had 
Breeze and Rogers and all that kind of stuff. So like even if Mike does get fired and he has to take a year off, he's already done that. He went into his barn and you know got his good publicity up and was at the top of the Cowboys list of candidates. Like he probably will get a head lie. coaching job. Well, for <laughs> sure, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Analytics, absolutely. He swindled <laughs> Pelissero big time. He swindled Pelissero. Yeah. He yeah. told Jerry. Remember they oh, should have yeah. hung over yep. at that press conference announcing him as the new head coach. He's right there next to Jerry Jones. And uh, the question's asked about how much tape he's watched on Dak, and he said, well, I told Jer I watched every All single play. <laughs> That's obviously not true. Now that I got the job, I can say that. Uh, so I'm going to dive into that whole thing. And then he had Tom Pelissero do an entire docu-series yeah. on the team meeting room in the head coach's room that he had in his basement because he was still operating every single day as if he was a head coach. He had been so ingrained in his routine that he couldn't help himself but go down in the basement, give a team speech to nobody, sit down in the film room, build up strategy, well, and then know. him and the boys would talk about how the game went. And then he'd come back up upstairs say, hey, babe, uh, we did just had another day being a head coach of no team. <laughs> Tom Pellicero did that. Th- that's a real thing. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And then as soon as we saw it, we're like, oh, shit, this guy. Yeah. Still got his fastball. Yeah, locked Can't in. Can't lose fastball if you're still throwing a fastball nope, that's the right. time, mm-hmm. even when you don't have a job. And then all of a sudden, he gets a head coach, and he, first thing he says is, I ain't watch shit of this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, Mike. I love him. Mm-hmm. I'm a big Mike McCarthy yeah. fan. Need him in the league. But the pressure of being a Dallas Cowboys coach is a wild one, especially yeah. on the last year of your contract. He literally has to win mm-hmm. a Lombardi. You remember how loud it was like when they lost that playoff game last year? And to Ty's point, he has the same, basically the same exact record as Sean Payton and Mike Tomlin. Um, both, and they all three of those have, have a Super Bowl. But he, if he goes 12-5 and five and doesn't go to the NFC Championship, he's done. But, you know, Dak could, you know, play for – 10 million a year because Dak said he doesn't care about the money, he doesn't play for the money, uh, so maybe that'll be point. the thing. He needs, he's not doing that. Yeah, yeah, there's he, no chance. He needs to stop saying that publicly. As soon as we heard it, we said that. Yep. And I, I'm happy his agent immediately afterwards said to Jerry, he doesn't mean that shit. Yeah. I'm the one doing the money talker, mm-hmm. not Dak. Dak's just doing what he's doing, being the Dallas Cowboys franchise, which is what he has done in a fantastic, I think fantastic fashion. Mm-hmm. He retired Tony Romo's ass to the booth. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then he kind of took that thing over. Has had no, like, aside from what, is it the injury that, that was bad? Leg, yeah. And not being able Ooh. to win a Super Bowl, I guess, is the, sure, the yeah. whole conversation around him. Yeah. He's done a fantastic job down there with the star on his helmet, which is obviously not easy. 